hardly overestimate the importance of this uh, next segment, uh, which I thought was incredibly insightful, from uh, Del Bigtree. And he is saying, really, that uh, New Zealand and Australia both have been quite successful in bringing the uh you know the the death levels uh you know down but he's saying um and he's saying it in the context of the Swedish example um which he says is the only way you know you've got to allow the virus to burn through the population while uh protecting the uh the elderly and the most vulnerable in society, which is not really happening, as we've seen in New York and other places. Um, so he's saying this is a warning to New Zealand that the moment that the guards are let down and the decision is made to reopen the economy, um, the virus will be, you know, will be back. Um, and I, I happen to, uh, agree with that, and, um, yeah, I mean, with all pandemics, epidemics of the past, whatever the virus is, uh, it's swept through the population, um, and then finally burnt itself out, um, Otherwise, this virus is going to be uh, here forever. Uh, suppression doesn't work, and elimination certainly doesn't. So listen very carefully to this next section. I would like to see a policy uh, in New Zealand that really nails this perfectly. And New Zealand's in a very interesting position. As as a great interview that Gusecki did on Australia uh, Sky News, where they said, well, look, we there's almost zero cases in New Zealand and zero cases in Australia. You say the Sweden model works, but, you know, we have zero cases. And he hit some great, if you want this, if you want this little piece, I think it's one of the greatest four minutes on the discussion of COVID-19. But Gusecki says, I think that New Zealand should be commended and Australia should be commended for having, you know, stopped this in its tracks and really managed to avoid having any cases. He said, but my only question is, how do you ever open? When can you ever go back to work? When can you ever allow travelers to visit your nations? And New Zealand, a huge part of your industry is tourism. And you have one. no industry. It's number one. So your number one industry is shut down if you can't find a way forward. And what people seem to not really understand is, you know, this is just another coronavirus or anything else. And you and I know that. But it's dangerous for a very small group of people. And they've blown it out of proportion. But the point is, is it hasn't run its course in New Zealand. I actually believe that New Zealand is going to see a serious outbreak or, a, you know, whatever you want to call it. The moment it decides to open its borders, the moment it decides, and sure, you guys could stay locked down. You could allow no one to ever travel there, no one to ever leave, and you can live in the prison of New Zealand if that's if they want to follow the directive of the leader right now. But the virus doesn't go away. It doesn't disappear. You can't, and, and, and what I've been trying to make clear to my audience is <clears throat> this is the greatest uh, health or medical experiment in the history of mankind. When they refer to Sweden as being a novel approach to the COVID-19 virus or, or SARS-CoV-2, it really isn't. It's the only nation that did what the rest of us did every single year, every coronavirus season since the dawn of man. We have let it run its course. There are death tolls to the very sick, as there always are. Only this time we tried something different. The World Health Organization, because of multiple agendas, but try to see, can we hide from a cold virus? Can we hide the world from this virus? And we've proven we can. New York lockdown, Texas lockdown, America's lockdown. Every single state that finally decides we got to go to back to work at some time, the moment we open our restaurants, the moment we open our stores, it's true. The virus comes and we see a rise in, in cases. 
I believe that the virus is, is not as strong. It's, it's run its natural course of evolution where it's not killing as many people. So maybe having waited is a good thing, but you're going to have those infections. You're going to have those deaths as Gusecki has said very clearly in Sweden, it has to run its course. I would say something that you could really do is promote an agenda to make New Zealand the poster child for how you move forward. Look at Tony Fauci just said, I think today, the vaccine will not be effective enough to get us out of the lockdown. The vaccine, anybody that knows how vaccines work, this is going to be at best a flu shot, which is 10% effective. No way that that can stop the issues if there are issues that we're talking about. So someone needs a common sense approach. And what I think would be really powerful to see in a politician in one of the few remaining countries that has somehow got yourself so isolated and bubble wrapped, uh, you know, you're safe, but you can't move, right? You're suffocating inside of your own protections right now. You need a policy to move forward. And that's something I think Rashid could be very effective at. But, in, you know, beyond just going after the attack on those that have put us in the middle of this, a proactive approach that really figures out a way that we, you know, really take care of the nursing homes, really take care of the elderly that are truly at risk while you put the population forward and your school children who have no problem with this whatsoever, you need to get to herd immunity. And the things that we're seeing now, it's not 75 or 80 or 90% of your population. All of the really decent science is showing that there's already an immunity in 60 to 80% of the population because this is just another coronavirus. If you had this cold last year, you're already immune. So we really just need to get that 15 to 20% of New Zealand to catch this cold, most of whom will have no symptoms whatsoever. This is one of the most mild illness for over 90% of us. But what I would like to recommend is, I think there's a strategy that really says, let's protect our elderly. Let's, let's make sure that the, the nursing homes, the retirement communities, that the doctors and nurses that work with them, that they are gonna get extended pay, more pay to stay and not go in and out. You can't go home, can't go visit your kids for you know a month or two. We're gonna lock you in with those. You're gonna make sure that inside of those communities they're getting out, they're getting sunshine, they're getting fresh air. We are serving hermetically sealed food that arrives and, and so that there's no interaction with this virus among that one population that is really at risk while the rest of us that have no issue whatsoever, no comorbidities, get out and develop herd immunity.